love that. Um, everyone, welcome to our staff development day. Um, we have a full day of learning, starting off with United Way, and we have a special guest that Jane will introduce. So we'll have those in our, we'll have this until about 8.30, 8.35, and then I'll make some announcements about the day, and then we certainly will be busy. But um, we have a unique partnership in Hastings with United Way of Hastings that one of their goals for the last number of years is students, connecting students in positive ways. And that certainly fits one of our five building goals of also connecting students to the school and the community in positive ways. So we have some of our own students who are here, but from United Way, let's give Jane New Newman Boost a round of applause. Jane. Thank you. Good morning. Good. That's great. I love it. Good morning, and thank you all for being here so early on a, on a Monday, on a day off. Appreciate all the hard work that you're doing. Um, wanted to just take a couple of minutes and do uh, a couple of introductions. Mary Mellick, our executive director, can't be with us this morning. Um, kind of one of those, those flu bugs that's going around. Caught her, I'm afraid. Um, but we do have, I want to introduce two, uh, two different groups here. We do have some of our YES team members. Those are our youth empowerment and support team members. And they're going to be assisting us with the presentation today. So starting up over here, introduce yourself. Just give us your name and what grade you're in. Thanks, Emily. I'm Emily. I'm Richard Booth, and I'm a junior. I'm Molly Vaughn, and I'm a sophomore. Thank you. I'm Grady Earls, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Isaac Fritz, and I'm a sophomore. Awesome. Did I get everybody? Any others? And Mike, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Mike Tapel. I graduated from here in 2015, and I graduated from the U of M last month uh, with a degree in construction management. Um, and that's kind of interesting seeing a lot of folks whose classrooms I was in just a few years ago now, but uh, <laughs> certainly glad to be back. Awesome. And Mike uh, has been a YES team member. They were called Teen Key Opinion Leaders at that point. Uh, and he's also come back now to assist us as an advisor to the team. And so Mike has a ton of experience giving the presentation and uh, also the real world application of what we're doing. Also want to introduce, we have a special guest with us today. Representative Angie Craig is here and she had some time yeah. in her schedule. Yeah. Welcome. Dressed. I'm, <laughs> I'm on my way to a breakfast in Red Wing and I asked if I could stop by and say a few words um, just based on your program. I have been in the United States Congress all of 19 days, <laughs> so I'm still trying to find my way to the bathroom and to the House floor most days. But the reason I wanted to come by and just say thank you for being here today is because a lot of times when you run for public office, especially Congress, there are 800,000 people in this congressional district, and all you get to know is what somebody puts up on a 30-second TV ad. And I wanted to come and tell you today how important I think this work you're doing is. Um, I lived in 12 different places growing up. I grew up to a single mom who had three kids. And in our lives, I can tell you if I look back to the anchors in my life, the anchors in my life, every single one of them were teachers. I can stand here today and I can think of Ms. Johnson. I can think of Ms. Hill. I can think of Mr. Johnson. Every <coughs> single one of them. And I can tell you, I had to work really hard to be able to go to college and, and, and you know, get a, get a good job. But every single one of those anchors in my life were teachers. And so I just wanted to tell you, not because I'm a member of Congress, that's why I get to come though, which is awesome. <laughs> it's because the work that you're doing is so, so important. I have four sons myself, and I can tell you, I understand what a critical age. Three of them are already uh, out of uh, high school, and one of them is at Rosemont High School. He's a sophomore there. Um, I often, people would ask me, well, what, you know, why the heck do you think you could be a member of Congress? And I say, well, because I survived middle school four times. <laughs> and if you can survive middle school four times with four kids, I think you're qualified to do anything in this country. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, the impact you're going to have on individual lives. And I'm standing here today because of the impact educators had on mine. So thank you again. Have a great training. I can't stay for the whole training, but thank you for letting me come and say good morning. And have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and jump out of here. Yep. 
Sounds good. Okay. I am delighted we are the beneficiaries of your brand new technology uh, over here. Normally when we come and present, we're trying to figure out what cords are available and how to plug into the computer. So uh, Mike is going to help with the rolling the slides through here. If you want to give us the next one there, Mike. Uh, again, Mary not able to be here today. I'm Jane. Uh, you've met our YES team members and our alums. Go ahead. We're going to talk a little bit about, many of you were here for the presentation that Mike and our other team members did about four years ago. So we're not going to dwell too long, but we are going to do a refresher, particularly for those who might be newer to the, to the school. Then we're going to talk about the impact of the Helping Kids Succeed model on students and alums. Mike's going to speak for a minute about that. Talk a little bit about how we're implementing, particularly in the middle school. We have some data to share with you that I think you'll find interesting. Talk a little bit about what we're looking for in future YES team members and our Life 101 workshops. And then uh, we're going to have trying to devote the majority of the time to give you an opportunity to kind of work with each other and talk about how to strengthen webs of support for uh, kids in our community. Next slide. So I think we can all agree, here are some things that we don't want, right? Some of these are getting a lot of attention these days, particularly, particularly bullying. Uh, we're hearing a lot about bullying, kids that bully, kids that are bullied. Certainly most of us probably would recall that we had experiences like that ourselves when we were in school. Uh, it's obviously a big concern. We ha I had no idea. We had uh, United Way of Hastings is going through a um, strategic planning process. And we met with a number of educators about three or four weeks ago uh, from the middle school, the elementary school, and the high school. Um, Kim, I thought I saw Kim Hoff in here. Kim was part of that, uh, part of that conversation. And one of the things that we learned during that that was, uh, did not know, that was, uh, that was eye-opening, the absenteeism rates uh, that you all are dealing with. And apparently, it's become quite epidemic across the country. So that's something that we really want to look at uh, hard in terms of how we can assist, potentially. Obviously, low academic performance is a concern, disengagement, uh, drugs, alcohol. Again, no idea, vaping, such a huge issue. I think a lot of kids, from what I've been hearing, think that it's pretty harmless. We're finding out more and more data, in fact, is saying that's not the case. And of, and of course, um, suicide is a big concern for us and for every community. Next slide. Things that we want to improve, obviously, would be academic performance, valuing diversity, healthy habits, lifestyle habits, helping others, like being good citizens, just kind of doing the right thing. And this is one of the things that I've really learned in working with young people. This is my fifth year being with the Helping Kids Succeed initiative and with the United Way off and on. And really the sense of a future, the sense of hope, the sense of moving into a bright future, I would say, I just kind of took that for granted growing up. Maybe a lot of you did as well. I think our young people are really struggling with that today, that that is one of the, the biggest issues that we have, the sense of a future and what are we moving towards and what will the world be like. Next slide. So really, bottom line, like the thing that I want you to take away is the solution to a lot of those things is to add more anchors, not posters. People have heard me say that before, like, oh, we get those great posters up, and they're beautiful, and they're full color, and I'm a photographer, and I love how lovely they are. But kids don't learn how to be good citizens and how to be successful adults from posters, right? They learn it from us, from the adults. And I was having lunch with a friend back in Illinois last week, and I was telling him about helping kids succeed. And I used the phrase, it's just that easy, and it's just that difficult to have five adult anchors for each one of our young people. That's our goal. Next slide. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit now about the Helping Kids Succeed model, a bit of a refresher. I have my wonderful assistants, Isaac and Brady, are going to uh, help with the process. You guys want to get us started? What are we looking for? How many teachers do we need? Three. Three. Which teachers do you think would be great participants? <laughs> Mr. Zabel. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. All right, we need one more. Miss Milholland. <laughs> Come on down. All right. If you'd be so kind as to stand right in the center. The three of you form kind of a triangle. Oh, yeah. Uh, rock, paper, scissors. That's good. Good morning. Welcome. 
Okay, if you guys would spread out just a little bit so everybody in the back can see. All right, so we have three adults, uh, caring, compassionate adults. They work with kids all the time. They're hard workers. They're dedicated. We're not shaking your head, no? <laughs> they're all hard working and dedicated, right? Okay, so we're going to use some very simple tools, string and a balloon, to illustrate when we're talking about building webs of support for young people. So, Brady, if you want to get us started, we're going to pass this off here to Mr. Zabel. And what we're going to have them do is pass the string between them. You've got to hold on to it while you're, it's very difficult. You have to hold in one hand and pass with the other. That's good, that's good. Keep passing. Yep. All right, now, guys, what do we have over here? Green balloon. Green balloon. Green balloon. Okay. <laughs> it's early. And what does the green balloon represent? Well, it's like the person trying to be held by a support. Yes, this is our student. Our lovely green balloon student, right? Okay, so you guys want to show us what happens when we have such a thin web. What happens to the student? Ooh, uh-oh, they're falling through the cracks. Not good, not good. So what happens if we add another adult? Then the support becomes stronger. Oh, let's find another adult then. Who should we have come on down? Corkish. <laughs> down, Mr. Corkish. All right, very good. A new addition to our web. Welcome. <laughs> uh, all right, if you would pass the string, keep holding on to it, pass it. And now if you want to hold on to it and pass it across the web there, very good, very good. Now if you guys want to pass it one or two more times, see if you can thicken that web up a little bit. I love this because, again, it's very easy visually to see what's happening. Okay, so now we have four adults in this young person's web. And Isaac, what happens if we want to bounce on the web there? OK, we got a little more support, a little more structures going off to the side. But Mr. Corkish has got him there. All right, what happens if we add one more adult? Hmm. Miss Jagger. Miss Jagger, come on down. <laughs> welcome, welcome. OK, let's pass the string to her. And let's keep weaving that web of support. Let's do that a couple more times. And as you can kind of see visually, which is what I really like about this, this web is thickening up. We're getting strings of support between the adults. Oh, they're making it very elaborate. I like it. OK, now, perfect. Can you hold your strings up so people can see? Look how thick this is, OK? So now let's try and get that student bouncing on the web. Let's see what happens. Hey, there they go. Whoa, whoa, keep it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he's bouncing on the web. That's perfect. Perfect <laughs> illustration. Oh, back in. Kick him in. Yikes. <laughs> I love it. Get on that web. Get in there, kids. Get in there. That's awesome. <laughs> perfect. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Great. If you guys want to uh, pass out the handbooks, that'd be great. We're going to give you everybody a handbook. Um, we don't have enough for everyone. Some of you have copies, but it's kind of our handout for today. So if you want to pass those down, and I'll refer to some pages in it, you're welcome to keep it. So what we just saw was um, this demonstration of strings for, of support for our students. And what we see from that is that the more adults that we add, the stronger the web of support becomes. And we're going to share some data with you that we've collected over the last two years about strings of support for our students. Uh, but I assure you that in comparison with uh, students from other parts of the country, ours are very typical. About 40% of our kids, depending on who you survey, about up to 40% report zero to three anchors. And we started with three, and you saw how thin that web of support was. And so the other thing that we have to remember is that anchors, our anchoring relationship is in the student's head, the student's mind, right? A lot of you are parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, extended family. You love your nieces and nephews. You love your kids. You also work with teens all day long, right? So you know that this is the age in which they're pulling away. They're forming relationships with people outside of their parents. 
And so if there are folks that, have, that, that we know that are trusted anchors that our kids can turn to, you of course as teachers and coaches being uh, primary drivers of those relationships, then we know those webs of support are forming even if we're not feeling particularly close to our kids or our kids are not feeling particularly close to us. My daughter's 24, right? It was amazing how my intelligence kept dropping and then as we hit the later teen years and into college, it started to rise again and, and now we, uh, we are great friends, which is wonderful. But it took a few years, right? It, it's definitely a challenge. So uh, let's hit the slide here and see if we can get the one. So we use the mnemonic Roy G. Biv to denote the pieces of the Helping Kids Succeed model. And sometimes when we do this, we, we can kind of go through and it takes a lot of time, but we're just going to highlight some things here. The first color is red. It stands for the rule of five to help kids remember, help all of us remember the importance of those five adult anchors. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we started doing presentations with the young people in the community is, is I, I kind of got tired of waiting for the adults to step up. Like we did hundreds, we taught hundreds of people this model early on. And the, nothing changed for the kids. And so we have started teaching um, in the middle school as well as the high school, we'll talk in more detail in a minute. Uh, but we really wanted to give them this information, to empower them, to give them agency, I keep using that word, so that they don't have to wait. So one of the reasons we're doing this presentation is, is that we're reaching more and more kids, particularly in the middle school. And as they come up into the high school, they're going to be looking for and using language um, that we want to make sure that you're comfortable with and that you're familiar with and that, of course, you already know this, right? We're not here to tell you how to do your job. You know how important it is to have relationships with kids. Um, but this can hopefully supplement that and, and support that. When we talk about strings, there's two types of strings. Strings are, if you're familiar with the work of Search Institute here in Minneapolis, they use the phrase developmental assets, same thing. Uh, some of you were around for a previous initiative, Youth First. Youth First used the term developmental assets, same thing. And if that's the language you're comfortable with, great. We're not trying to change that. But it is easy for young people to remember when we talk about strings. So orange strings are tangible strings. Those are things we can measure. Like does the youth have a safe house to go home to? Do they have nutritious food on the table? Uh, do they have appropriate clothing to wear? Do they find math easy to do or reading easy to do? Is there important work for them to do? There's 20 tangible strings. If you look on page 14 of your handout, uh, your handbook, which is your handout, you'll see the list of strings, both orange and yellow. Uh, the intangible strings then are on page 15. Those are things we tend to call the character qualities, things like honesty, gratitude, justice, compassion. The more of those qualities our young people have, the more of the qualities that we have, right, the better citizen we are, maybe the more successful we are as an adult. And as I said, kids don't learn honesty from a poster. They learn honesty when they're a little person and at their grocery store with mom or dad. And mom goes, oh, you gave me too much money. Here's $5 back. And the little person is like, oh, that's what we do. We give the $5 back. But if mom puts that money in her pocket, then um, the little person learns that we don't give the money back. So all the things that we're doing, are we're role modeling for young people. <clears throat> so on page, uh, like I said, 14 and 15, you can also see, I believe there it's on page 15, I'm going to take a gander over here. You can see that uh, we start to correlate the strength of the web, the number of strings that are in the web, uh, with these positive qualities that we want kids to have. So I'm going to look at my notes here because I had something, uh, yeah, page, 19, page 17 and page 19, that gives, starts to show you the list of uh, challenges that young people are facing, the things that we want less of that we talked about and the things that we want more of, it's strongly correlated with the number of strings that a young person has in their web of support. Strongly, strongly correlated. And in fact, the correlation to becoming an eventual success as an adult, right, we'd have to define what success is, the correlation with the number of adults in their web of support is stronger than race, income, neighborhood, uh, any of those demographics that you can think of, that's not where the strongest correlation lies. It's in the number of anchors. That's why it is so important for our young people. You saw our vision and mission statement up there earlier. That's why it is so important that we help each one of our kids have a thick, healthy web of support. 
is that's going to benefit our community. It's going to benefit them, obviously, individually, but it's also going to benefit our community in the long run. So we have 20 orange, 20 yellow, tangible and intangible strings. We use green, as you saw with the guys. We use green to represent the student. Uh, we don't talk a whole lot about this with the kids, but kids tend to come in different size balloons. Some kids we call big balloons. They're just naturally very resilient. They sort of bounce no matter what. You've, you've had kids like that in your classes. You can probably think of a few of them right now. Most kids are medium-sized balloons, kind of average. Some kids are small balloons. And the guy that had my uh, role before I did, Rob McMenemy, some of you may remember Rob, graduated a, a number of years ago. Rob was great. He said, I was a little balloon. Like, people were tossing me strings all the time, and I just didn't catch them. It wasn't until I went off to college that I got to know uh, more about myself, found kind of my passion, found the people that I connected with, and I felt like my balloon was growing. What we tend to do in America is focus on the balloon. What's wrong with you? How come you aren't doing it right? How come you aren't kidding it? How come you aren't connecting? I, it turns out I was diagnosed as an adult with ADD, which explained a lot <laughs> growing up. All those teacher-parent conferences, right? Jane just is not living up to her potential. Hmm. Well, the focus was on Jane. And I had, a, I had an OK web. I didn't always catch the strings that were tossed to me. If I had known more about that diagnosis as a young person, uh, maybe we could have found some additional anchors that would have helped boost, uh, boost me up a little bit. With the balloon, we always start with strengths. This is a strengths-based model. We have an online assessment uh, we've, we've used with a few kids. And when we do assessments, we always want to start with what's working, what's right about them. Blue, uh, sometimes when we do the web demo, we actually demonstrate cutting the strings. We call those scissor cuts. Scissor cuts are when you go from eighth grade to ninth grade, and it's a whole new world, right? And you've got to find new friends, new relationships. You really miss you know, your counselor back at the middle school. Scissor cuts are your favorite grandparent passes away. I'm in my mid-50s. My parents are gone. My friend's parents are passing. Right? It's a really tough time. Indigo. When we had our five individuals up here, what we didn't really talk about is how each one of those five needs five. I need five. You 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 need five. Mike, do you need five? I need five. You need five. Guys, do you need five? Yeah. They need five, right? We all need five. So what starts as a youth development initiative is really a, a, a human development initiative. And it's very easy for those of us who are busy adults to let that slide, right? So having coffee with friends, taking time to read that book that's been on your nightstand, going fishing, doing ice skating on the pond, right? Those things that we don't think we have time for, particularly when they involve other people, Gang, we got to do that. we got to make some time for us. And I know it's hard. I know we're all busy. But the more our webs are strong and healthy, the more we can support others with their webs. And then Violet, <coughs> we don't talk a whole lot about it, but Violet is social norms. Like, where do our kids, I, again, I use the example, how many of you, when I work with young people, how many of you have been told not to drink and drive? Right, everybody's hands, yes, thank you. How many of you know where to get alcohol and what house you could go to to get it. Yeah, when I work with the kids, like half the room raises their hands, right? Hasn't changed since when we were all, they don't know that, right? It was like that when we were young too. Uh, that's a community norm. When we tell our kids don't drink and drive, but there's alcohol available in other people's homes, then that's a community norm that's kind of saying, ah, kids will be kids. Well, that's really contradicting those of us that want to have a strong message about not drinking and driving. So community norms can enhance the web, or they can blow people off the web. Next slide. So some data to share with you. Is Eric in here, Eric Dietz? Eric, good morning. Eric was kind enough to let us do a beta test back in April of 2015. We surveyed about 40 kids in his class. Uh, he had technology available, the computers and so forth. We used what was called the student support card learned a lot about the logistics of administering that assessment. But what the student support card will do is measure all kinds of aspects with the, uh, about the young person's web of support. And what we found in Eric's class, uh, it was 
we had 12th through 9th graders, but mostly boys. And we found that about 40% uh, about of that class said that they had zero to two anchors. And I have another slide on that in a minute. During the 2017-2018 school year, the elementary school principals wrote a grant for the United Way allocations process, which was uh, given to them. And they brought in the Wetterling Foundation to, for all the K through five students, a presentation on personal safety. Well, the Wetterling people have also worked with Derek Peterson, the founder of Helping Kids Succeed. And so when they talk about five trusted adults and we talk about five anchors, when kids hit sixth grade, hopefully, it'll be very seamless for them. Then we started to do training in Hastings Middle School. The sixth and the eighth grade received training. And is Pam here? Yep. Pam, thank you, Pam. Pam uh, has helped us work with the 10th grade to give the presentation to the 10th graders, which we hope to do again this year. And so hopefully the Wetterling Foundation presentation will happen again this school year, that the, the gentleman will write the grant and it'll be approved. We are uh, hitting 6th, 7th, and 8th. We've done 7th and 8th so far in the middle school. And we're hopefully doing, uh, with, I would love to do 9. I know that's hard. Um, hopefully we'll get the 10th grade again this year. And then going forward, our, we have quarterly, uh, five times a year we meet with a group called the Helping Kids Succeed Community Partners Group, which any of you are welcome to attend. Unfortunately, we meet on Tuesday mornings. Um, but we do get representation. Mike is there most of the time. Uh, our middle school principal is there, Mark Zuzik was there, and now Steve Kovach is there. And in that group, uh, about a year ago, they said, you know, our vision really would be that kids K through 10 kind of receive a, a refresher every year and would love to see if we could hit somehow the 12th grade right before they head off into their next uh, challenge. They're going to need to rebuild that web of support. And so our, our goal would be hopefully kids would, would be familiar with this information. Uh, throughout their school career. I will put this in a, an over, I'll put this in a handout and share with Mike and then he can pass it out to everybody. Basically this is uh, Eric's class uh, when we did the, the beta test. This group reported 143 anchors in their lives. I, this was fascinating to me. Over 70% of the students listed one or more parent as an anchor. That was good. However, only 16 or 40% of them reported they considered a teacher, a coach, or a volunteer to be an anchor. That number was very high to me. I was, I was kind of surprised. So I thought you would find that very interesting. One class, one set of students, we wouldn't necessarily see the same data uh, in every assessment, but that was, I thought that was eye-opening right here. Uh, again, we'll, we'll send this out to you in a handout. Last year we did 362 eighth grade students. We surveyed them on anchors and strings. Of this group, 56 reported three or fewer anchors. So not quite as high, um, but the group we did with Eric's class, mostly boys. Boys tend to be somewhat less connected than girls, and it shows up in the data. So 15% had three or fewer anchors. We had multiple kids reporting their pet was an anchor. They're closer to their pets than their parents. That's, I think, sobering. Um, 193, 53% of the class wanted more information on helping kids succeed. That also blew me away. They want more. They want to know more about building their webs. 62 were interested in being a Yes Team member when they hit high school, which is kind of cool. And of the strings, this was also really fascinating to me. Ease of reading, helping others, and people skills were the top three that they said they wanted help with. Ease of reading, like the number one thing by far of 362 surveys, a majority of kids said that they either didn't read well or wanted to read better. Far higher than math, ease of math. It came down at like number eight. Yellow strings, patience and self-respect. By far, patience like blew everything out of the water. They want more, they want to know how to be more patient. That was fascinating. Next slide. <coughs> so we're going to talk for just a second about impact. Mike. Mike is our, our graduate. Tell us a little bit about what this means in real life. Sure. So for me, growing up, I didn't have this information. Thank you very much. So growing up, I didn't obviously have this information at that time in my life. But looking back, I can now kind of connect the dots and see where this would have fit into my life personally. So I had two parents who were seniors in high school when I was born. Uh, they've never been married my entire life. And because of that, I kind of had a uh, what you would call a unique family structure 
lived with my grandparents and my mother the first several years of my life. Um, and looking back now, I can see all the different people in my life that were those anchors because my dad wasn't directly in my life. And while we were connected, he moved away to Utah when I was six years old. So since then, I've been in good touch with him, but at the same time, he's not here. He's been across the country for the majority of my life, and that's made things really tough when I was, especially when I was like fifth, sixth, seventh grade. So as a result, like I said, a lot of other people contributed to my life as anchors. And those people were often coaches, teachers, uh, and just other people I was involved with in my life, like my friends' parents. Friends' parents was a huge one since I was involved in Boy Scouts and sports and things like that. You know, parents who would be willing to give me transportation or volunteer to be responsible for me. I know one man in particular, a uh, friend of mine, um, his dad, we were in Boy Scouts together and in Cub Scouts, we would need a parent volunteer, adult volunteer to be responsible for a child to actually go on a camping trip. And my mother is definitely not the camping type and my father lives, you know, 1400 miles away. So he would always volunteer to be responsible for me as well as his own son every single time. And because of that, I actually became an Eagle Scout um, at the senior high school as well. So some of these people have contributed to my life tremendously and they're not always the people that we may think. It might not always be the parents, the grandparents. And there certainly was some of that in my life, and I'm blessed to say that. But at the same time, there was a tremendous amount of other people in my life who, who made that impact, who I can now, looking back at it through this model, say, this person was an anchor for me, and I caught that string. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Guys, anybody want to? No. No, you yeah, guys, same. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you looking out of the window there. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, Hannah Martin is also one of our former team members and now works at the, high, works at the middle school as a Promise Fellow and also recently uh, was hired as a Dakota County Sheriff's Deputy. She was also not feeling well this morning. She works two full-time jobs. Keep telling that woman to sleep. Um, but she wanted to come and talk to you about the impact of helping kids succeed on her middle school students. She works with a group of about, she and the other Promise Fellows work with about 30 students each. Um, and I talked with her, like after we did the presentation last year, like, is this really having any impact? I mean, it was like 45 minutes. And she goes, I can see the difference in my kids. When they start talking to me about anchors and strings, I see it. And when we did this year's eighth grade, they were a refresher from last year. I was watching her with the kids and how much they remembered also blew me away like they told it was amazing so they are getting it they are they are thinking about it this is our yes team of which we have several shining stars here today team of Hastings High School students this is year five we're looking for emerging leaders we teach them the model they represent they present they facilitate and they advocate they do projects we want them to build their leadership muscles and of course develop their webs of support if you want to hit this so this is kind of an analogy when we're, what we're looking for with our kids. This is an eight pack of crayons. This is a 64 pack with a sharpener. Did you all get a 64 pack with a sharpener at Christmas? Because I never did. <laughs> My mom was an art teacher. Uh-uh, that old box of crayon stubs is good enough. So I always wanted the 64 pack with a sharpener. These are the kids that have extremely thick webs. A lot of times they tend to be our natural leaders. We think of them first when we think of leadership opportunities. Kids with an eight pack of crayons don't have as many strings or as many anchors. And they're probably, you can think of those kids, they're probably struggling. What I'm looking for on our team, I'm really looking for 16s, 24s, and 48s. Those are the kids that, like Hannah Martin, you wouldn't necessarily have thought of her as a leader. She was a leader among her peers, though. Anybody remember Natalie? Natalie Chapin? Natalie is one of our alums. Some of you would not have predicted the future for her that she has. She's taking college classes, she's working for Walmart, and they keep promoting her. She's now uh, um, in charge of a team that goes around and helps stores when they get remodeled and put in new floor plans, and it's amazing. She's so busy, she's sleeping. She could not be here this morning. Uh, these kids are amazing, and so they would probably self-identify as 16 and 24 pack kids. So when we ask you in a couple of weeks to be thinking of kids, uh, we ended up with 64 names this last year. Kim has helped us with this. 50-some came to our presentation, 45 gave me their names, 30 showed up to dinner. And of that, we have two, four, five, six, seven here this morning. So when kids get too busy, this is just really low on their priority list. Next slide. 
We also are doing Life 101 workshops. We've offered several this past year. Working on the publicity, I'm not sure we've always done a really great job of promoting. Mike taught back in July with a person from Dakota County, uh, Financial Empowerment. We created a class called How to Great Graduate College Without Being $100,000 in Debt. There were 22 people here. It was a smash hit. Uh, so we're going to offer it again. Hopefully in February, we have to pull, pull the logistics together. Kids also write, you guys, we've talked about this, they would love to learn more about budgeting and managing money. And we had a great conversation at our last team meeting about how to have difficult conversations. How do you debate someone while doing it respectfully? How do you disagree with someone? And I said, we could create that class ourselves, couldn't we? So these are the three workshops we're thinking of offering this spring. I noted that when we did the personal safety workshop, one teacher in here offered extra credit. We had 40 kids that showed up. Thank you, whoever you were. <laughs> um, the kids got a lot out of it. Ryan Klein, Officer Ryan Klein, did a great presentation, both in the classroom and then we went out into the lunchroom area. Uh, and they were able to practice some personal safety moves, which of course kids love doing hands-on stuff. So if we promote it, please think if you'd be willing to give extra credit for the workshops because uh, that does help drive attendance and then we want to present, if you have ideas, please share them with Mike, share them with me. We'd be, we'd be happy to put on a workshop that maybe it's a topic you don't have time for in class, but you'd love to see kids get that information. <coughs> we'd be happy to do that. Next slide. Okay, so our YES team, we met the other day. Uh, Molly was there, a couple kids were there. Talked about learning targets for today. These are the things the students would love to have you get out of today's session. How to start strengths-based conversations with students. Ideas on how to be a stronger anchor. How can staff help kids build stronger webs across classes? And ways to build webs for less connected kids. So those are your learning objectives that your students have set out for you today. So what we want to do, we've got about, I think about mm, 10 minutes if we go to 35, okay. So we've got about 10 minutes. Uh, the kids are gonna help facilitate. I'd like you to break into groups of four, five, or six. The students are gonna come and sit. You won't have a student for every group, but uh, I would like either the student to act as a scribe or for you to act as a scribe, one of the group people in your group to act as a scribe. We'll compile your information. We'll send it back to you. And I want you to look at these questions. Hopefully you could have time to chat about two we're pushing it. If you only get to one, that's okay. What's already working in your class or your school to build webs of support under students, right? This is not a deficit model. We want to start with what's working. What are we already good at? What do we know is already helping kids? What do you do personally to get to know students? What activities, conversations, books, teams, etc., reach less connected kids? If you could wave a magic wand and find five anchors per student, poof, Poof, right? Poof, five, 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 five. How did it happen? How did that kid get those five anchors? So a variety of questions, all right? So if you could break into small groups of four to six, you may or may not have a student. We have paper for you to write on. Please pick one question to work on. The highlight of my job is getting to work with the YES team. They're just amazing. So. Uh, but I also know that sometimes it's like herding cats, right? Meow, meow. So I know your job is, uh, is challenging, but thank you so much for the work that you do. Uh, we are always available. We're down at, at our new office, right in the Meyer Company building. Um, I've got cards, so if you need my email address, Mike, of course, can get a hold of me. Uh, if you want to pass on any other additional information, please feel free to do that. We, we appreciate everything that you do, and we're here to support you and supplement the work that you do, because I know we're all helping to build a better future for our kids in Hastings. So thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.